uh, when I trace your career, and I, and I uh, recently saw your film, Breath Made Visible, I felt the, um, the diaspora. I, you, you, you're very familiar to me because, again, we come from a similar generation, and I was raised by my grandparents. So even though I'm second generation, I really am really first generation also because, because of, of the influence. Because of them. And so the diaspora is very, it was very uh, uh, tangible. And, and it, it turned out, and I, I sense it in you, the, the issue around social consciousness mm. was it. And the issue of the um, the labor unions and the sweatshops and the all and you know when I hear now about unions and I hear all of the you know uh, di you know disrespect toward unions and all that and I go back to those years of the exploitation of the workers and all of that and I sense that in you, mm -hmm. and I sense the the uh, social. Uh, there's a certain kind of social consciousness that I do associate with the diaspora uh, in in the turning uh, again into lemonade. Mm -hmm. the, 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 that phase of diasporic beginnings in, in, the, uh, in America that was very socialistic that uh, I think of the Rosenbergs a little bit. Yeah. I think of all of the Kami Jew labels, mm. and I think of the kind of humanitarian, even now to this day, when they talk about the liberal media, they really mean the Jews. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the Jews. Mm -hmm. And so that there ha so the, I, I really would like to you know, track that in relation to the progression of the, coming from the ghettoized dance world, you know, of people in, <laughs> in whatever that is, into the, you know, making whole cities dance. Mm -hmm. I mean, bringing together the Palestinians, the Israelis, the Bedouins, whoever else was around. I mean, you know, and I, I mean, that is, I mean, that is right livelihood and good karma, but it does come from somewhere. Yeah. In other words, the past does shape us in an enormous way. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question to you is, you know, to, you know, to tracking, you know, how, you know, those influences, you know, all those influences that shape us so that we arrive mm -hmm. at this unique humanoid, at this unique time with this unique heritage. Mm -hmm. I have always been attracted to the underdog. Uh -huh. Yes. I have always been attracted to those who have been mistreated through prejudice. Okay. And so whenever the situation has come up, and it's just come up right in my face, uh, it's something that I've always wanted to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. the, the, the more obvious one was uh, the Watts riots. Mm -hmm. And I got a telephone call from a man who saw me do a piece uh, based on lunch at uh, a National Arts Council and asked me if I'd come down with my company and do a dance at the Mark Taper so that he could bus the, the people from Watts into central wow. Los Angeles. And I said, no. Why did you say no? I said, because I wanted to include them. I said, what I'll do is I'll come down and I'll work with your, uh, your, mm. your people in Watts. I want to know more about your people. Mm -hmm. And then after nine, and I'll work with a similar group, all white group here, mm. and we'll work with the same scores and we'll see if we can maximize our differences and find our commonalities. So for nine months, uh, every Saturday, I got on a plane and went down to Watts and worked with an all-black group. Mm. Took them a while to accept me. I was going to ask you that. Took me a long time I mean, for them the trust, to trust me. I was going to say the trust they level did. is not... They yeah. finally did. They thought... Right. Well, How long did it take? I mean, just... Nine so. months. Yeah, right. Okay. And then I worked with the same scores with a white group here, which I, I formed separately. I mean, it was a whole new group. So we would all start from scratch. And at the end of nine months, I brought the two groups together. Mm -hmm. where, where was that? At 321 Divisadero Street in San Francisco. Uh -huh. I had a building there. And they lived together in a, a house. And together we built 
a dance called Ceremony of Us. Mm. And we came in as strangers and scared of each other. Some of the uh, members of the black company, as well as some members of the white company, had literally never touched a white person or yes. a black person. Yeah. Never even touched them. Yeah. So at the beginning, there was a lot of fear and tension and anticipation and excitement. And we developed a dance called Ceremony of Us. Mm. Now, as a result of that, uh, when I did, uh, when I went to Los Angeles for the opening of Breath Made Visible, every single yeah. kid that was in that dance was there. It was, I happened to be in the audience, yeah. and so that was really touching, yeah. uh, having them yeah. come to Some see. of them came back to San Francisco, and as a result, we developed what, what I called a multiracial group. So we first started with blacks and whites, and my intention was to train them in, in a creative process that they could bring back to their own communities. But we got a grant from the Expansion Arts, and so we worked together for 12 years, and eventually we started bringing in um, uh, Asians, uh -huh. and then we brought in Latinos, mm. and then we even brought in an American Indian, mm. and my own daughters, Married one of them married a, a, an American Indian, the other one married a Muslim. Mm. So, so you must have fun at Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> being a Jew <laughs> must be fun. Yeah, well, their mothers are Jewish, you right. see, That's so what they're I'm Jews. But at any rate, uh, it, it went on for twelve years, developing this multiracial company, and I really devoted myself. 100% to that experience because it was, I found that I was even prejudiced and I couldn't believe it. I know that they, uh, we got a, a, a grant from the National Endowment of the Arts expansion program because the head of the expansion program was an African American man that came from Watts. But as soon as Reagan came in and the Republicans came in, that whole program dropped. So I had to disband. But we toured and uh, and we became family. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I found that I was prejudiced. I couldn't believe it. Because they would get so much money every week and uh, they'd go out and buy a pair of fancy boots or some you know, fancy clothing. And I would say to myself, are they crazy spending their money on fancy clothes? They could have got, done this or that. Status. And I thought to myself, you know, that's a, that's a judgment. That is very prejudiced for you to... Well, you know, to to think in that way. So it was it was a life changing experience for me, and uh, and then I was attracted to AIDS because I felt that people with AIDS uh, were being discriminated against, un and it was unworthy and cruel. And uh, Andy Wil Wilson was in the group, and we made a film about it, mm -hmm. and um, and I think that it did change the life of many of the people in it that felt supported and yes. felt that they were being more accepted. Well, you see, you have the ability, it seems to me, to turn the light on, on again, as you said, the underclass, and to, and to, crea you know, and to create these, uh, these living openings. But I, I want to go to another, I want to go to a more intimate subject here. I, although I've been married several times, but I chose never to have children mm -hmm. because I cannot diversify, really. Mm -hmm. In other words, it takes everything that I have to do what I do. I can't have any, I, I know how I am. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine how you maintained the marriage, the children, the household. I hope you had a cleaning person, did you? <laughs> At a certain point, yeah. Oh my God. And then, you know, all of the issues that come from handling people, teaching classes, company, you know, all of the politics of humanoid. I mean, I just, I, you know, so when you say that you got a, a little congestion in the colon, I mean, but, I mean, can you, I mean, many women are confronted with this kind of, I mean, yeah. I, I chose not to do that. But I mean, how could, I don't even know how you could do that at all. I mean, how does that well, work? Well, when I had children, uh, I was interested in 
uh, the, uh, the schools, the educational field, uh -huh. and found that, I, that, that there was something very basic missing. And that was uh, emphasizing creativity. Mm -hmm. And they, they were just getting a lot of information. But the way they were getting that information uh, w w was not producing a, a creative child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this disturbed me. So I started uh, a dance co-op uh, with the parents, more liberal parents in the community. And I worked with children for 25 years to really... Uh, be part of my children's life and the classes were 50 cents <laughs> and the parents were being educated along with the children and uh, it was a co-op it was a you know non-profit co-op so that way I integrated the children into my life and they also were uh, integrated into my performances wow. for a long time I don't know if they appreciated that, but uh, they went on tour. They saw the world. But weren't you exhausted? I mean, uh, well, if I wasn't doing that, I would have been doing something else. Now, I guess I'm pretty driven. You are. <laughs> and okay, so so what do you? <laughs> I, I agree. So what do no, you? No, it was hard. I, I I will. I I've got to admit it. It really was hard, you know, and trying to be a dutiful wife. Oh, I can't and imagine. in those days. Um, uh, you know, dinner on the Did table. Did you cook dinner, too, on top of all that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, you know, nowadays the men are a little bit more involved in, yeah. uh, they cook, they take care of children. But in those days, the feminist movement was just beginning. Right. And, yeah, I, I had a pretty traditional relationship to the household. Oh, now, I, I, I want to also continue along these lines in the sense that I do see you as a pioneer and a visionary. In other words, if you, you know, when you talk about being driven, which I understand, you know, I would say, I would imagine that you're driven by a vision and by yeah. forces that, that live in you, mm -hmm. that are propelling you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just say that in being a visionary and being a pioneer, that you're kind of alone in that vision to a, to a very large degree. So I'm curious as to the kind of loneliness that it, in other words, when somebody's ahead of their time, they are in a particular um, uh, space that not too many people are mm -hmm. able to be there. So that there is a kind of an aloneness in mm -hmm. that. So um, do you care to comment on that at all? I mean, in terms of the... Well, I think you're right. I think that uh, uh, dance has always been a, 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 a passion for me. And I, I've never, when I was going to school, my brothers are brilliant. My one brother has an IQ of 180, another one, you know, one graduated cum laude. I mean, they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I was never good in academics. Mm -hmm. I was always in the slow classes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant until, <laughs> until later in, you know, in my education. But yeah, I was in the slow classes. But I was always good in motor skills. Uh -huh. so, like sewing. <laughs> so, so, you know, I put a lot of effort into what I was good at to make up for my inferiority complex. Wow. Uh, and so I think that dance was was a real passion for me and it was more than a passion it was kind it was a uh, um, uh, uh, an acknowledgement and and a reinforcement of my self-worth mm -hmm. and um, who were your first teachers by the way in, in the, well was Ruth Page well you were oh, in no. Chicago no. no she was ballet anyway uh -huh. but uh, 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 an Isidore Duncan teacher um, bingo yeah and uh, and then uh, a Rue St. Dennis teacher, oh. and then a modern dance teacher. Uh -huh. And when my brothers graduated and left the house, my mother had one of the teachers come and live with us so I would have a kind of a sister. Mm. And also, my sister died, and then I was born, and I, I was driven by the idea that uh, I had to be worthy because I was taking the place of my sister from my mother. Oh. 